what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel welcome to another morning ride to work because i still have the 350e today with me and uh it's the day after the road trip and uh, i have to take it back to work now i had a bit of time to like let the experience settle in and uh, have a think about it what was it like if it's actually a, would be a good purchase and uh, that's what i want to talk about plus you get to see how it rides through the city because i realized i never showed that okay just gonna set up let's see if we can set up a front facing camera there that would be interesting now one thing i don't like this rubber ring here that shields the under seat storage from the rain is very very thick and it has a lot of stuff and these pads here and uh, especially now that it's new there it goes you really have to manhandle it to close it <laughs> well, i guess that's not necessarily a bad thing all right let's get on the road and get to work because it's i am running a little bit late just a little bit hopefully the camera angle for the front one is okay because i'm i don't have time to really set it up if it's not okay then i'm probably not gonna use that camera angle but you get the gist of the matter ah back on the e. Even after the road trip, which was maybe a little bit mesmerizing, uh, so I thought now it would be a better opportunity to speak about it, uh, because I don't know, the magic wears off uh, of being on a road trip, this is just a regular ride to work, but kind of doesn't. It still kind of feels like a very compelling and complete package. Although through the city it's probably gonna be a little bit of a whale because of how wide it is up front. It's almost as wide as the handlebars, the front fairing. But uh, it doesn't feel heavy to maneuver. It's pretty light and agile on its feet. Uh, the power of the engine is very direct and yet is delivered in a very smooth way. And uh, at least last night, I, I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking because, as you know, people who, regular, who regularly watch my channel, I do have my little ST200, which is a 12 horsepower city scooter. I did use it for touring quite a lot. Uh, but mainly that's like a city machine. It's very fuel efficient in the city. It's very nice and light and nimble and easy to get through traffic That would be a city machine. I also have a 1996 R1100 GS which is properly prepped for touring with luggage with uh, uh, Crash bars uh, just about everything you could put on it connectors for my heated gear that's a wonderful touring machine it has a 25 liter fuel tank it has a big 1100 cc engine awesome touring bike it would do highways and a bit of off-road and everything and yet ever since i got it about a year and a half ago i haven't actually done any proper long distance touring like uh, thousands of kilometers two week trips and somehow I'm not eager to do them and this is I think a problem that I see at least because in the showroom where I work uh, we get a lot of people that switch from motorcycles to big 300 400 cc scooters uh, I see a lot of people after a year or two of riding a 300 or 400 cc scooter kind of like these maxi scooters that are decently good in the city and really good uh, on the long distance haul all of them kind of end up with the same conclusion usually they buy the 300 cc scooter as a city scooter and after about a year they end up selling their big motorcycle and using that maxi scooter for absolutely everything including touring and uh, that's kind of what I feel now, even though I have a big 1100 GS in, uh, in the stable, if I'm thinking about going long distance touring, I'm 
somehow I I like the idea of taking my little scooter, my ST200, more than I do my GS. I don't know, the, the GS is just big and cumbersome and heavy and you have to think about a lot of things when you're on tour with it or when you have to leave with it. Where you're gonna park, where where you're gonna, what roads are you gonna take. If you take a, I don't know, uh, an off-road dead end, then uh, turning it around is kind of a bit of a pain. So, every time I think about going anywhere long distance, I end up thinking about going uh, on my scooter. Even though I have a big touring motorcycle. Now the problem with my scooter is that it's very small and very slow on long distance trips. But this thing is just as easy as my ST200 to just get on it and ride. But it can maintain highway speeds. And I mean proper ramming speeds. You could cover some very long distances very quickly on this thing. The engine is very happy at 130-135 at kilometers an hour. Fuel consumption is higher than my ST200, but considerably lower at the same speed than my GS. Usually my GS eats about 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers if you ride it at about 90-100 kilometers as in economical riding, economical speeds. Uh, if I would ride it like uh, I rode this one at 130, 140 kilometers an hour, uh, yeah, the, the GS would go up to almost 7 liters per 100 kilometers, uh, which is a bit much considering this thing. Yeah, yielding not a not Romania strong point. So yeah, the GS would go at least above 6 liters per 100 kilometers, 6.5 to 7, that's depending how cold it is outside. And uh, 6.5 compared to this thing's 4.5 to 5, that's just about 2 extra liters per every 100 kilometers. And when when you go on like a 2-3 thousand kilometer trip and uh, considering the fuel prices here in Europe, 2 liters per every 100 kilometers, that's a lot of money. Okay, that's a lot of money. So, so this thing is starting to look like a very, very compelling option. And like I've said, I've got, I got nothing to complain about. What I would have liked from the factory, would have made it absolutely perfect, is uh, cruise control and Android Auto on the big screen. But other than that, I have nothing to complain about. This thing is absolutely awesome. I mean, even the fact that you have an electric windscreen, in the summer at least, you could pull it down and get some airflow on it. Again, something, yeah, something I do not like is if you put the windscreen down and you want to put it back up again, uh, you have to be going uh, 100 kilometers or less because the motors here, electric motors, are not strong enough. Are not strong enough to actually push the windshield up when it's uh, when you're going over a hundred kilometers an hour and as you saw back there this thing has plenty of get up and go to get through city traffic it's a very very compelling option and a very complete machine and the problem is is the price not because it's high but because it's somehow a low price i mean uh, a Honda Forza 350, which doesn't have all of this touring equipment on its standard, is about uh, 1500 euros more than this one. So, uh, yeah, quite a lot less money, quite a bit more power, and quite a bit more equipment, standard equipment on it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely not as easy as my ST200 to get through traffic. Definitely not as easy, but it's still doable. I mean, you get a situation like this where you, even my ST wouldn't have anything to do. We shall see. 
That's the problem with cities like Bucharest. You, we do have traffic and a scooter is good through traffic but we have here certain types of very very tight traffic that even you you really need just a little small city scooter to actually make it work but you can make it work even with something as big as this if you're a little bit cheeky you can make it work Again, nothing to see here, officers. Nothing to see here. Just a law-abiding citizen trying to get to work. There we go. I'm on the lines. Yes, I'm right in the lines. Everybody, shh, the fuzz. Nothing to see here. It's almost green, it's almost green, the traffic light Grand Prix is almost on its way and the three, two, one, go! Punch it! I love that pick up and go. And through the city, if you really want to cane it! <laughs> Whoa, baby! That's it, that's fast enough. <laughs> I think I'm pushing my luck with uh, the fuzz currently. But this thing is just so awesomely beautiful to ride and check out the, the maneuverability. I don't know, because of the long wheelbase, it just has a majestic way in which it flows from side to side. I'm trying to find faults with it, guys. I'm trying to find faults, and I am struggling very, 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 very much. I'm not saying it's completely faultless, but for what I am looking in a do-it-all machine, it kind of has it all from the factory. I don't know. I'm usually a tinkerer with motorcycles, and I add stuff. I don't know what I would add to this. Uh, a top case, my carpuride, a throttle lock, and a cup holder. And probably a phone mount in case I really want to keep my phone on my handlebars, but that's about it. Yeah, I even have tire pressure sensors, for God's sake. I have a trip computer that shows me my fuel range, my estimated distance covered on my remaining tank of fuel. Really? Come on, give me a bit of room. Maybe, yeah, like I've said, riding it through the city, through a city like Bucharest, which is a really crowded city with really narrow streets, is a little bit more difficult than a small little city scooter like a 125cc. But if you're not a courier and you're not looking for that edge, for that extra... I don't know, a tenth of a second to a delivery. If you're just going to work and back, yeah, looking currently looking at the time, and there's not much of a difference from uh, my time with the Symphony ST and with this one. And it's been a really crowded day. So yeah, for, uh, I don't know, maybe an extra one or two minutes uh, in my commute to work, but I have the ability to have a machine that could easily cruise the highway at 130 kilometers an hour and be supremely comfortable doing it. <sighs> it's hard to deny it. It's hard to deny it's a compelling package. It's a very, very complete machine. And uh, I've heard there would there is going to be an option for factory mounted dash cams and also I've seen a little clip on the internet of somebody mounting JBL speakers on the left and right hand side of the screen so this thing might get might get even better and better and better now I'm not necessarily a big uh, speaker guy on your motorcycle I do have a car though and I listen to that but for somebody who is meh and also for uh, front and rear dash cams integrated into the wiring loom of the machine so you can record your rides for safety purposes. Again, <laughs> that's an option you don't see on many bikes. And I, I, I don't think any bikes come with factory dash cams. Apart from QJs, I know a couple of QJs do, the expensive ones. 
So yeah, kind of the Chinese are pushing these uh, dash cam, uh, factory mounted dash cams on motorcycles. Uh, and honestly, I like it. I like it. Whoa. I realized I, I didn't talk anything about the brakes. Honestly, I have nothing to complain about the braking system, both front and rear. The brakes are Jage One uh, calipers and brake systems. Um, if you don't know who Jage One is, it's a Spanish company that is owned by Brembo. It's a Spanish brand owned by Brembo. So effectively they have Brembo related brakes and it feels like it. The front brake at least has that initial bite every time you put a tug on the lever. It has that initial confidence inspiring bite. So even the brakes I have nothing to complain about. But anyway, I'm here at work and uh, hope you enjoyed this little ride through the city to work. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time everyone, take care out there and ride safe. Bye!